All right, good morning, friends. We're at a different door today. This is my, we're in my kitchen. There's my greenhouse. I know you guys have heard me talk about my greenhouse. And here's the door to the garden. We've got something different going on today. So let's see if we can find Millie and Spencer. Oh, I see Spencer. Oh, and there's Todd, too. Say good morning, Spence. Say hi. Hi, Spencer. Let's go see if we can find Millie. Let's see what Millie's got on her table today. Oh, here she is. Come on out, stinker. Oh, sorry. Say hi, Millie. Hi, Millie. So today, I told you we were going to be starting with some backyard birding activities. And I want to show you what we feed our birds in our backyard. Because birds are a lot like children. They can be very picky eaters. So not all birds like all kinds of food. So I've got, let's see if Millie will. I'm surprised she didn't come right for these. No, all right. She'll get there eventually, I'm sure. So here we have peanuts. And I know not everybody eats peanuts, but uh, certain birds like blue jays really love peanuts. We had peanuts out in our feeder last night and the blue jays were out eating them in the evening and uh, also the squirrels. The squirrels like the peanuts too. So that's, we've got one kind of food. Then we've got this mix, which is saf uh, sunflowers, sunflower seeds and corn and it's got some peanuts in it. This is, um, can be for animals like bunnies, but birds like this kind of stuff too. So that's one thing. These are for slightly bigger birds. Your jays and, and um, some cardinals. Now we'll come to this little fine, oh, of course. All right, so this is some fine, uh, this is uh, Niger seed and that's for finches. So depending on what kind of birds you want to come, to your feeder, you're gonna pick different kinds of food. And this is like a mix. It's got little cut up pieces of corn and some millet. So different birds like different things, just like how you guys like different things. And here's one that everybody always says, ew, these are mealworms. These are dried bugs. And these are for our carnivorous birds, right? Cardinals, they gotta get their protein too. And um, I have had kids try them. They say they taste like Fritos. Um, I've never been brave enough to want to try a dried mealworm, but you know, to each his own. And then our last kind of food, I didn't take it out of the package, is something called um, suet. And this is for like birds that have the sharp beak. So I'll take it out. Comes in like a cake. And this is for like our woodpeckers and stuff like that. No, oh, that's okay. She's fine. She can investigate. But what I do need is the battery pack. So what we'll do is we'll read our little story. I'll leave Millie on the table. And then I'll show you our very... Oh, look. There she goes. She's trying the mealworm. Did you try one? No. They're yucky. All right. So then we'll do our simple craft. We did super easy today. So today's story... Well, counting is for the birds, and it's by Frank Mazzola Jr., and it's got loads of birds on uh, all of the pages. So counting is for the birds. Let me just plug in to my battery, because, you know. <sighs> okay, so counting is for the birds. The feeder is still. It hangs overhead. It's morning time for the birds to be fed. This new day begins with fog all around. Be still because there are birds to be found. And look who's looking underneath. Uh-oh. We have to be a little bit careful when we put our bird feeders out because some of our neighbors have cats that like to come into our garden. So that's always something you should be careful of whenever you're setting up a bird feeder. All right, let's get going. 
zero. Well hidden below, a cat lies in wait. This cat is greedy, his appetite great. He sees there are zero birds he can catch. No birds on the feeder for him to snatch. There's that cat. Then one chickadee grabs on with his feet. A second floats in. Her tiny wings beat. Both birds move quickly, so keep them in view. Count them together and you will find two. One, two. These are called black cap chickadees. And what black cap chickadees do is they take turns at the feeder. So usually first the stronger bird will go, make sure everything's safe. And then when that bird flies away, then the second bird will go and check out and they take turns. That way they can protect one another. Sound the alarm if anybody is coming that shouldn't be there. All right, three is a titmouse. Four is her mate. These birds are feeding at a rapid rate. These little creatures will flee to the trees. Once they have landed, they peck at the seeds. And these are cousins to the chickadee. Right, so now we've got one, two, three, four. Bird five clutches on and pecks with his beak. Number six arrives and takes a quick peek. These woodpeckers eat bugs they find in the wood, but they also eat seeds, which taste really good. And we get some woodpeckers, usually on, we've got this big tree in my backyard, sometimes we hear them. And they also like to come to our bird feeder and they take the peanuts and they take the suet. So we, we get some woodpeckers some, sometimes back here. Birds seven and eight drop in from up high. Goldfinch's feathers help color the sky. The number of birds grows larger so fast, the cat still watches the birds that fly past. And there he is. Did you see him at the bottom of the page? There he is. And here's a picture of the finch face up close. They have very sharp beaks, cone-shaped beaks that are designed to help them eat seeds. Nine is a sparrow who dives in with speed. The tenth comes along and follows her lead. Ten birds are feeding with plenty to share, eating together and enjoying the fair. That's a fancy word for a meal, right? The fair. Look at all those birds. Eleven is red. He feeds on the ground. Number twelve swoops in without making a sound. Crouching in silence, the cat keeps his stare while cardinals feed in front of his lair. And so you can see the cardinals. We've got cardinals in our backyard. There's the boy cardinal, that's that dark red one. And then there's the girl cardinal. She's sort of a brownish so that she can camouflage. Maybe we'll see some cardinals. A famished duo is next to arrive. 13 and 14, these finches will thrive. 14 birds feeding, all eating their fill. Each bird is hungry and cracks seeds with skill. And we've got these purple finches. I saw some of these when I was setting up um, today. They're a little bit picky, but we get them every now and again. If we're very patient and quiet in our backyard. Bird 15 flies by. His pal sweeps in too. These buntings are colored in indigo blue. There they are down there. 16 birds eating and looking about, devouring the seeds until they run out. But look, I don't see the cat anymore. Huh. He's taking a nap. 
17 and 18 join the array. These two nut hatches will soon fly away. For now they relax and wait for the chance to feed on the seeds that they eye with a glance. And nut hatches, that's this, this guy right here. Oh wait, no, this one right here. Um, have a special feature and it's the way their feet are built. It helps them walk um, actually upside down. They can walk down the trees. Usually if you watch uh, birds try to climb a tree, they can only go up, they can't go down. But they are, their nickname is the upside down bird. They can walk head first down trees, which is pretty rare. Never really knew that until I read this book. 19, <gasps> uh-oh, the feeder twists when a blue jay flies in. The swift number 19 enjoys this swift side spin. He seems imposing because of his size and the others react with utter surprise. And you'll notice when you start really watching birds, um, you know, I never really noticed it before, but when you really do see a blue jay, they are quite big and they are, um, they are a little bit clownish because they will fly onto your feeder and the whole thing moves back and forth and all the other birds will scatter because they're so big, right? They don't even know that they're big. Uh-oh, here comes the second one. The second blue jay, the final bird here, is looking around and is showing no fear. Our count is now 20. It's time for the beast. And 20 is plenty for our sneaky beast. Uh-oh. Here they all are at the feeder. What do you think the cat's gonna do? Ooh, I think they're okay. Oh, oh no! Launching himself with his prey well in sight, the cat tries to catch the birds in mid-flight, but something goes wrong. A gray streak lands there, scaring his qua quarry that used to be there. So who came? Ha! That squirrel. Before the cat could really even catch anybody, the squirrel scared everybody away. We, our squirrels love our bird feeders. I'll show you what we did for our squirrels because they were being such pests. Oh, there they go. One selfish squirrel spoiled all the cat's fun. And as you can see, his plan now is done. The cat feels so sad because he missed a treat. 20 birds are now flying down the street so they all went to go find another bird feeder because they know uh-oh can't stay here in this yard and that is the end and it goes through all of our books we've got one two black cap chickadee three four tufted titmouse five six downy woodpecker seven eight american goldfinch Nine, ten. That's the American tree sparrow. Those are, these guys are super friendly. They'll come out even if there's animals around. Eleven, twelve, northern cardinal. Thirteen, fourteen, purple finch. Fifteen, sixteen, indigo bunting. And you'll see those are ones where the boys and the girls are are um are different in their feather colors. The boys have these like uh, very bright colors, and the girls because they have to protect the nests. Are more earthy colored. Uh, 17, 18, those are the nut hatches, and 19, 20, those blue jays. And um, so now we're gonna get through and we're going to, um, I don't know, you wanna look at the bird feeders first and then we'll make our, now you know what we'll do? We'll do our craft first. So I got this lovely thing, we'll see if it works my clipper so that I can use my hands and see my dirty outside table. So we're going to start super easy today. We're going to make a very, very simple, simple backyard bird feeder. Can you see what I used to make it? Oh, here comes the beast. Let's see what Millie's going to do. <gasps> Millie, those are for the birds. Those are for the birds, Millie. 
So you can see we've got a circle and we've got a, what's this one? Triangle. And then we've got this one. That's a square, right? And this was super easy to make and you probably have these things at home. Um, if you don't have everything, we'll figure out a way to come up with other ideas. But um, for today, we're using cereal that has a circle in the middle, or I should say a circle with a hole in the middle. These, I'm sure everybody has, right? What are these guys? Cheerios, hooray. And all you do is you take a pipe cleaner or a shoelace and you put them on and you thread them on. Now for little kids, this can be very, I'm doing this super quick because I'm a grown up, but for little kids, this can be a little bit of a challenge. Working our fine motor skills, right? All that threading, putting beads on strings and uh, you know, in this case, cereal on a pipe cleaner. So you put them, um, fill it all up, and then you can either just close it by twisting it, or if you're a little bit bigger, you could turn it into a shape. So let's keep going. I'll put more on here, and we'll see what we can do with our, it's funny, Millie is outside, and she doesn't often get to be outside free, and I think she doesn't like the bright sunlight. So she's trying to hide up Todd's sleeve. You guys know how she does that. You've seen her do that with me. I'm gonna be quiet for a second so that you can hear our birds in our backyard. I'll just put them right on this pipe cleaner. And that's the other thing, when you get really good, YouTube is a good place for this. Um, they've got all different kinds of bird songs. Sometimes the birds are a little shy and they don't want you to see them, but they always like for you to hear them. So each bird will make a different song and you'll know who is in your yard, not only by what you see, but by what you hear. It's hard sometimes to be quiet. So you see I've got them all on here. And then we'll sort of bend it. And then you just give it a twisty twist. And then you can go just like putting an ornament on a tree, you can find a branch. I have a bird pole, I'll show you my, my bird pole. So this is a fun one for the little kids. If you are in a household that has colored cereal, as you can see, we're not normally, Todd swiped this from when we were last on a cruise. Um, but if you have colored cereal, a fun thing you can do with colored cereal is make a pattern. So we'll do a three-part pattern today. We'll do orange, green, blue. And then what comes next? Orange, green, blue. And then we have to start the pattern over. So what do we do? Orange, then what comes? Green. Oh, I know you smell the Fruit Loops. Those are her favorite. That's how we sort of trained her. Not that she really listens, but that was one of her training treats for Millie. So yeah, she sees those Fruit Loops and is smelling them and she wants to come out. I bet if Todd opens the door, she'll come right in and steal a Fruit Loop. So orange, green, blue, orange, green, blue, orange, green, blue. Let's see what we've got. Orange, yeah, here she comes. I know you have no shame. Green, blue. So patterning is another way 
that you can do this if you have colored cereal. Now, if you only have two colors, then you're gonna have an AB pattern, right? That's two colors, AB, one, two, one, two. If you've got something like Fruit Loops, um, you can make a lot of different patterns. So we're gonna close this one up and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna hang them. Oh, look here, Millie, you want that one? Help yourself, kid. Knock yourself out, can you see her? You know, this isn't all about you, Millie. A lot of you guys know that she loves to eat her Fruit Loops. Don't climb my tripod. Of course, I bought the wrong kind, so. All right, so now I'm gonna take my different shapes and, well, maybe we'll do, oh, I know what we'll do. We'll put the different shapes I'm gonna connect them in a big long chain and then we'll go put them on the feeder pole and then we'll sort of sit back and wait. Now the thing about birds is they're a little bit shy so if you're standing right under your feeder they might not come to you. So the trick is is to be patient. I don't know if you can see my hands doing all of this so and then we'll get you out of this contraption so here's my big chain and I'll show you my birding my bird watch center so we'll all go together say hi Spencer sometimes Spencer chases the birds away too he's also a menace so here we've got our different kinds of bird feeders. I've got our seeds for the little birds. We've got our suet for our like woodpecker guys and our starlings. I'm gonna hang what we just made right there on my bird pole. Here's my dish feeder for um, the blue jays and another suet feeder. And then let's go over here. We're gonna do that one last. This one's my favorite, but we, uh, this is my garden. It's messy, it'll get better. We'll do a lot more with the garden. This is my fruit feeder. Cause some, ant, some birds like, oh, sorry guys. So if you have apples that are gonna go rotten or berries or oranges, you can put them on a hanger outside and the birds will come and visit them. Oh look, here we have a little guy. They're gonna come. And now here comes my fussy bird feeder over here. This one is for the finches and they like yellow. So I put a little yellow flower on top and I hung them by my forsythia so that when they come and they see all of this yellow in my garden, they know to come here. And then we'll just hang these extra ones on this crazy tree over here. All right, friends, so it's time to say goodbye. This is my garden, Ooh. and um, I'll sit out here for a little while. I don't think we're gonna get any video just yet because we're up walking around, but maybe we'll get some other uh, friends to come and visit. All right, have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.